Greetings and extreme victory to you all. I'm Chappers and welcome to How to Buy Guitar. Now before I start this escapade of joy, I should say that any person who tells you how to buy a guitar will be biased, uh, including myself because everybody likes a different kind of guitar and everyone has different preferences and uh, yada yada. So, you know, take what I say with a pinch of salt, maybe some chips and a steak and a caffeinated beverage can replacement for the fail, <laughs> and um, and you'd be good. First thing is, if you're buying a guitar from a guitar store, so you're going into a guitar store you need to overcome that inherent fear that most guitar players have just residually residing within their bones of playing in front of other people. Forget that shit. You're there to buy a guitar and spend some money, so you don't want the staff making you feel intimidated, going, all right, here you go, mate, here's your guitar, and they start playing some shred lick and then give it to you and sort of stare at you like this. Who cares what they think? You're there to spend money. That's the object here. Um, I would prepare yourself in advance. Before you go to the store, Think about a couple of things that you can play and that you enjoy playing and that you feel comfortable playing. If you are an absolute beginner, then to be quite honest, take a friend that can play with you because you want someone to, to know whether you've got a complete piece of shit or something that's just going to be good for you and help you out. Wait, I need chocolate. So you're in the store, you found a guitar that just appeals to you aesthetically. Um, maybe you're a massive Jimi Hendrix fan, say so you want a Strat or maybe, you know, whatever the hell. You find the guitar, you pick it up, and the first thing you should really do is strap it on. Don't just hold it and kind of sit in an awkward position because you're in a store and you want to get out fast. Ask the guy for a strap, strap on the guitar, and stand up and sit down in the same position with the neck elevated, uh, don't have the neck flat because no one plays with a flat neck habit, slightly elevated so your hand can sit naturally, and pretend you're in your bedroom playing to yourself. I said to yourself, not with yourself. So we're all comfortable and strapped on with the guitar. The next thing is amplifier. Now, the kind of amplifier you play through will make a massive difference to the feel of the guitar. Now that's gonna sound a bit weird if you're a beginner, but trust me, if you have an amplifier that gives you um, the kind of sound you're expecting to hear. So say for example you're into Satriani, you want a saturated gain, lean, soldano y boogie, you know, overdriven JVM kind of tone, and you start playing through a Fender Hot Rod, it's gonna feel like a dog to you. They come to snap the rooster. <laughs> you need an appropriate amplifier. If you've been playing for a while and you already have an amplifier, Bring it to the store. If you're buying a serious purchase, if you're getting a guitar that's going to cost you 700 quid or whatever, take your amp to the store. Be in a familiar territory. Yeah, here comes a rooster. You don't own an amplifier think about the kind of sounds that you like so if you like super high gain stuff tell the guy that's helping you i'm into high gain stuff what kind of amplifier would you recommend don't end up playing your guitar through an amp that isn't fit for purpose Yo! So, you got your amplifier, you got your guitar, everything's feeling nice, maybe they've offered you a coffee. I like that. That's the way guitar shops used to be in the olden days, when they're like sort of gentlemen's clubs. Um, you know, it's good. Basically, the staff should be friendly. They shouldn't really be the kind of guys that try and show off to you, put you off buying something. If you ask for their advice, they should give it to you freely, you know. Look out for a guitar shop where the staff say, um, this is your guitar, this is what you need. 
No one tells you what you need. You make your own decisions, don't you? So, obvious things to look for on a guitar that would make you uh, think this is a good guitar. The first thing is materials. Guitars are instruments that need to resonate, uh, and you want to make sure that the materials are high quality so they resonate nicely. So, for example, I have known of and had students bring to me guitars, and the bodies were made of foam. It was a, a plastic shell inside, it was foam. Fuck foam. Uh, you want wood. Now, if you want metal y stuff, you want nice, deep, dark, resonating mahoganies. Um, oh, yeah! If you want, basically, you want to have a, a, a tonal build that complements the style of music you're into. So if you're going to be using dark, uh, thick sounding music, you want those kind of materials. So, you know, mahogany's, ebony's. If you're looking for bluesy, light, crisp tones, you want your sort of maples and your, you know, your ash and that kind of thing. Learn about materials. Next thing is, little tiny things make a big difference. Um, look at the knobs. Do you like the feel of the knob? Do you like it knurled? Or do you like it to be um, unfinished? Makes a big difference because you're going to be using that a lot. Look at your tuners because, um, for example, these are beautiful Grovers. Um, nice, you know, 18 1 ratio. If you turn the knob, the string moves. That might sound like a silly thing to say, but. I've known tuners where you turn the knob and then it's like, uh, now it starts to move. Nothing happens for a while, um, which is really annoying. So tune the guitar, you know. If you can't tune the guitar, get your mate to tune the guitar for you. Nut. Well, there's a bit of a, a debate about what materials make a good nut. Basically, bone nuts um, have been proven to work and sound really good. So bone is good, brass is good. Tusk is also good, T-U-S-Q, not actually tusk, um, it's a man-made material. Look out for ones that are sort of plastic and have bits of plastic either side of these where the string pokes out. It means the string's wearing down into the, t into the, the nut and that's not good. If it's a second hand guitar, look where you play a D chord because a lot of beginners play a lot of D chords and where you put your fingers down, look under the fret, look under the string at the fret and you'll see, um, if you see lots of wear, so like the fret goes in, then the frets are worn, I probably wouldn't get it. Do the same thing up here on the 12th fret because lots of players who begin playing sort of beginners to intermediates within the first year play a lot of E pentatonic and they bend this note and they bend this note. So I'm at the uh, 13th and sorry, the 14th and 15th frets. So look under and make sure there's no fret wear there. Those are the obvious places to look. The next thing is run your fingers down the side like this, take them away and look at them. If they're bleeding, don't buy the guitar. Let's talk money. How much would you spend on a guitar? Well, here's the thing. If you are an absolute beginner, there are two schools of thought. There's the average school of thought, which says um, spend 100 quid and get something that's sort of, you know, shit from Argos or whatever. And, you know, if you end up not playing, then you've not lost any money. Well, I would disagree with that train of thought. The reason being, if you buy a shit guitar to learn on, you're, you're really hampering your progress with, with an inferior instrument. Um, and if you do end up going to sell it, you won't make any money because no one's going to buy a second-hand crap guitar. Um, I would buy a brand. I would buy uh, something that will hold its value. I would, buy, I would never buy anything under £200 um, for a beginner. It's just a false economy. Um, you'll end up with an instrument that you don't want to play really because it doesn't really get excited, it doesn't play very well, and you get no money back in it. So I would get something like a Chapman, or a Fender, or an ESP, or a, you know, just get a brand name um, and get something that you really like the look of. Um, you don't want to, <laughs> you know, what the way it looks is really important. If you buy a guitar that doesn't really get you excited about playing it, you're not going to play it very much. You want a guitar that you look at, you know, and you think, fuck me. Uh, it's on a stand, and you look at it, and you just want to pick it up. That's the way it should make you feel. Like, I've got this one here, this beautiful Fender Squire. And when I put it on the, the stand, and I look at it, I just want to grab it all the time, you know? So get a guitar that looks nice to you, not to someone else, to you. Let us discuss setup, because setup is a very personal thing, and it makes a huge difference to the feel of the guitar. 
Um, there are two things to really look out for, other, other than it being tuned. The first thing is action, which is how high the string is over the fretboard. And the next one is the relief in the neck, which is how um, curved. So if this is my neck, for example, then this is concave, as in coming towards you, and that's too flat, or the other way, convex. So you want flat, but with a tiny little bit of concaveness to it, a bit of curvature. Here's how you check that very simply, and there are other ways of doing this, but this is what I do. Put a first finger on the G string or a middle string, and fret it against the fret. With your other hand, change the sound of camera, use your thumb to depress the end fret. And then in the middle of the neck, just dab it down on the string and see if there's any, if, if you have to have air between the fret and the string. You want about half a mil of air between the string and the fret when you've pressed both of these frets down. As in, a straight line from here to here will give you a little bit of air between the fret and the string. If the string touches the fret, the neck is too flat or is convex. And you adjust that with a truss rod adjustment. If it's flat, get the shop to adjust it for you. Now that's a personal preference thing. Some people like a, really, a lot of relief in the neck and some people like less. The next thing is the action. Lots of people will tell you that a really low action is good. It's not really good because it doesn't allow the string to breathe and emit bass tones. But if we take a look here, I've set this one up. Uh, the 12th fret just as a really rough guide. A mil and a half to two mil over each string if you press down. You need air between the string and the fret so that the string, when, it, when it's pinged, can rotate and give off the tone. Another epic chapper's tip of tonal doom is if you hold your guitar nice and lightly with one hand, ping a string and then put a finger on the headstock, just one finger and rest it on the headstock. The headstock should be vibrating. You should feel it quite strongly through the headstock. If you don't feel it, don't buy that guitar because it's not resonating. Um, if you feel it strongly, the force is strong with this one. Go ahead and purchase. So you're all strapped up, you've got your amplifier, you've got your tones, and you're going to start playing something like this. Some figures about the ML2. This is Chapman Guitar's third guitar. First was the ML1, second was the Ghost Red, third is the ML2. Um, and we have sold over half of these now. They arrive in England in July. You can reserve one if you go to Bajang, um, where you'll find they're incredibly reasonably priced. There are a couple of different ways of getting them. You can get a left handed one, a right handed one, a customised one, or a standard one. We ship them to America, we ship them worldwide. Um, if you want one shipped to you and you're not in the UK, all you have to do is email info at andertons.co.uk or give them a call and tell them where you live so they can give you an accurate shipping price. <laughs> Purchased your guitar, uh, everything's exciting, you got it home, what do you do? Well, the first thing I do is string it. I'm just going to string it with some Didario Win. Next level gaffer tape maneuver. Uh, this is my uh, gauge of 10 at the bottom, 9 at the top, because I currently got eights on this bad boy because I was going through a bit of a Jimi Hendrix phase. Be still, Snaggle. Just to sort of show you how soft these eights are, check this out, I can take my, my, my finger here and just bend it past infinity. Past, infinity, beyond. See that? That's pretty damn soft. Now I was considering um, having, oh, that's my, my biggest fan there. Uh, I was considering putting these in this um, ML2, but I'm very undecided because to be quite honest, these Chapman Guitars pickups are very good. They just kind of sound like a high-end pickup and they're very cheap, very cheap indeed. You're with us.
Incidentally, I always ping it first just to make sure that I'm going the right way. <laughs> in case I go ping, and then you embed metal in your hand, which doth pain me. This is quite a good example of the quality of workmanship and the attention to detail that we went through. These little ferrules here on cheap guitars, you'll often find that when you change the strings, they fall out. Am I right? Yes, you're right, Chappers. But these don't. These are well in there. They're glued in. They're not going to come out. Um, it's just one of those little tiny things that makes a big difference to me. So here we have some nice virgin string territory. <laughs> I like this bit. I, get, I really enjoy stringing. This is one of those things that I've just sort of always enjoyed. Bone nut there. You can't see that it's bone, but it's bone. Uh, little elf door here for my elf. And these uh, metal knurled knobs are particularly firm. There's my nice tidy string job. Check that out. Beautifully crisp and even. More often than not, when a guitar is imported from China, Korea, Japan, America, um, they're sat in warehouses for a long time, they're in distribution for a long time, they're on airplanes, they're on boats, the strings are not in a good state. And the stores don't always string every guitar they get in. So I would string a guitar, um, if you're an absolute beginner, I would put 9s on it, 9 to 42s, um, because they're nice and soft and easy to play. And you want a guitar that's easy to play, it shouldn't be hard work to play a guitar. Anyway, I hope this has been of use to you. Um, if you like this guitar, this is the Chapman Guitars ML2, Mother Lima 2. And um, I'm very proud to be the founder of Chapman Guitars. This guitar is made of mahogany, two-piece body, ebony, fretboard, bone nut, Grover tuners. Um, it's super, super high-spec uh, materials. Made in China, so it's cheap and affordable to buy, and you can customise it through our store if you buy them at andertons.co.uk, where I frequent once a month to shoot demonstration videos. Uh, you guys take it easy. Chappers out. Pick throw.